<clears throat> All right, we got the gold standard today. Uh, morphine. Morphine is uh, gold standard. It probably was synthesized in the early 1800s and it came from a, a poppy. Uh, you know those pretty poppies, right? Well, you take the poppy and you cut the side of it and you get some of this stuff out. You make, uh, you make an alkaloid out of it and you process it and process it and you get morphine. Morphine sulfate. Morphine sulfate is the uh, gold standard of opioids and it is a thebane molecule. It's not important. The point is this. Many of the opioids have that uh, thebane component to the molecule and it just kind of defines what it is. So the opioid will change its characteristics and how it affects you by what's on that thebane component. So <clears throat> here's morphine and its unique characteristics. Morphine is an opioid, so you get all those opioid side effects. You get sedation, a little more so than some of the others, hydrocodone and oxycodone. You get metabolites. One of them causes irritability. One of them causes more uh, analgesic sedation-like effect. So it's got two kinds of metabolites, important, uh, especially in liver and renal failure. Number three, it's constipating pinpoint pupils. The side effects you'd expect from an opioid but it does other things more so usually than most. Um, it causes a lot of histamine release, like the uh, hay fever type stuff you get and you're scratching and that sort of thing. But what it does when you get it IV, it's in the hospital, you give it IV and you get this histamine release and you'll see a streak up your arm. That's not necessarily an allergy. It's more of a histamine release. Benadryl, antihistamines can help that, not really topicals. It tends to go away. Now, it's potent. There's kind of this wives tale about the evolution of this drug through the 1840s and 50s when the hypodermic needle was developed. And here comes the Civil War. <clears throat> and uh, that's when a lot of morphine was used. And they say, 400,000 had soldier sickness, a lot of different names, but soldier sickness was the big thing. And that's where, when they didn't get the morphine, they went through these goose flesh problems. Uh, they, cold turkey, that's where it came from. They had cravings, nausea, vomiting, running nose, running eyes, everything leaked. Diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, yuck. But <clears throat> the point is, it probably wasn't then. It was probably the early uh, 20th century, about 1915, 16, 17. That's probably when we started seeing more of the addiction problem. And now, interestingly, as with <clears throat> some opioids, the mere stress of the experience that you're in the middle of has something to do with your craving and desires to get away from the stress. What we found out in Vietnam is all these opioid users, either it was from uh, heroin or from morphine or from whatever they get their hands on over there, when they came back to the U.S. and they were out of that stressful combat environment, they were all right. A lot of them were all right. Of course, there were some addicts, but it wasn't like what we're experiencing now with the fentanyl heroin crisis. Heroin, I said heroin. Heroin is not morphine, okay? <clears throat> Interestingly though, some opioids are metabolized and they look like morphine, codeine. So what I see in my drug screen is, well, wait a minute, uh, I see morphine and I see codeine. It's okay. If I see morphine prescribed, but I see metabolite coding, not okay. You gotta learn how to read these things. That's why you always have an experienced healthcare provider that provides your medications. Okay, well, morphine is, 
is not one of my favorites. It doesn't do well orally, although there are plenty of oral preparations, short and long acting. It does better perennially. That's IM in the muscle or IV in the vein. It can be used directly. It can be used, um, well, think about it. If there's a way to get it absorbed, it'll get absorbed. It's one of these uh, compounds that your body sees. It's an opioid. It's a pure mu opioid agonist. So there's the mu receptor. Sitting on the cell, there's Mr. Morphine. And Mr. Morphine goes and causes uh, a reaction at the cellular level, leading to effect. It works in the central nervous system, brain, spinal cord, and there are opioid receptors in a number of places, hence scratchy nose, histamine release, skin has them. I, they're all over the place. So what we're looking at is say we give you some morphine and let's say we give it to you IV. It goes to certain places in the spinal cord to either interrupt or moderate pain goes in the central nervous system. It goes to the primitive part of the brain behind the ear where the reward center is at, driven by dopamine, gasoline for the addict. And then prefrontal cortex where it's experienced euphoria. Morphine, uh, Morpheus, came from Morpheus, dreamy. Uh, so it was recognized early in the 1800s uh, through the 1800s and recognized by healthcare providers that, of the day that you had to give it with caution. Back then they realized their potential problems. The opium, opium dens were sprouting up. People knew you could smoke this stuff. Uh, you know, they were giving it all sorts of ways. In fact, um, there was even a way that they were giving opium morphine, opium slash morphine in the central nervous system into the CSF. Henceforth, our pain pumps now. Our pain pumps give morphine directly next to the spinal cord. Topic for another day. So of the many ways to, to deliver this drug, uh, we find it ubiquitous throughout the world. It's everywhere. Availability is good. Uh, it's manufactured in great abundance. Um, I think it was 400 tons was uh, made in 2016. That's a fun fact. Um, reference that. <laughs> Where do you get all your information? What's the most important information you can get is Dr. Google. I don't know where I got that number, but it's there. Somewhere out there, a lot is manufactured. So <clears throat> this is the deal. Morphine is, is a very good medication. And I'm going to tell you, and uh, an addiction doctor, a dear friend of mine in Atlanta, she agrees. I don't see many people get hooked on morphine. It's not the drug of choice. It isn't that front row seat, that intense euphoria that you get with oxycodone, hydrocodone, hydromorphone, fentanyl. It's just not that. And when we start talking about heroin, fentanyl as the street drugs of our day, the drugs that we worry about, well, yeah, we worry about fentanyl because it's 75 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Potency. Well, that means strength. Morphine. I get dependent on it. I mean, I need to have it or the withdrawal. Yeah, you might. It might be the flu. It might be worse. There's different ways to grade it. Uh, and... Yeah, yeah, it can happen. Uh, but dependency is not addiction. Tolerance is not addiction. Well, I have to take more of it to get the same effect. That's tolerance. Yeah, okay, but that's not addiction. Dependence is an addiction. Tolerance is an addiction. No, you can't abruptly stop drugs like this. You'll have those feelings, those withdrawal feelings. You'll get funky. You'll go to what's called a hedonic set point. You'll feel like, I, I need uh, some reinforcement, Mr. Dopamine from Mr. Morphine. Um, and you need that to feel over here better. In other words, the tolerance curve keeps getting pushed further over here. You need to take more and more. And you don't feel normal until you're on that drug. Well, that requires careful 
weaning or discontinuation of this medication if you got to come off of it. Some people, you're going to be on it for a long, long time. If you got a pump in you, you're going to be on it a long time, maybe indefinitely. So it's important to have all your questions answered. Qualified healthcare professional. Morphine, a very good drug. A lot of ways to give it. It's uh, ubiquitous, easy to get. It's easy to find in the healthcare community worldwide. So access to care is not an issue. And uh, a lot of countries use a lot of the drug. It's a, a great first drug for many tough problems, but you have to monitor it carefully, just like everything else. Uh, you got to be real careful with uh, medications of dependence. Dependence is not addiction. You can be dependent on Starbucks, right? Talk about this. Uh, but it's a drug that requires experience to use, uh, if you're given this drug, um, have a question set ready. Ha ha I call it a script. You know, there's really only four or five questions you need to ask because it's our duty to, eh, to give informed consent. And where we are the teacher, you are the recipient, you understand with no barrier to communication. Really important. Uh, here are some of the questions. You develop your own script. It's, it's intuitive. What are my choices? What are the side effects? Is it habit forming and what does that mean? How long will I have to be on this drug and how do I get off this drug? If I don't like it, what are my, as choices go, alternatives if I have intolerable side effects and when do I notify you? It's this kind of conversation. Okay, it's a script. It's pretty good for morphine. I, it's not the first drug I go to, but it's a good drug. It deserves a conversation. Rule four, know thy drugs.